Welcome back folks, I'm Frizz and today I want to talk about what I think that players new to 2E should be aware of or at least looking out for, or at least the stuff that I think is most important for people to be aware of. After all, Pathfinder 2E is a pretty big system with a lot to talk about. I'm not going to be going over everything in excruciating detail in this video because, you know, that takes take forever, but I hope that this is at least useful for anyone who's new to 2E, either because of, you know, fleeing corporate greed from Wizards of the Coast, or, you know, just the natural growth of 2e. Alright? Alright. So first, I want to talk about modifiers. Something people say a lot, or at least I know I do, is that you should never underestimate the power of a plus one. Little bonuses or penalties can make a huge difference in 2e, and I think that everyone who plays 2e has a moment at some point where they realize how important they can be. It, it's like a revelation. To cover the basics of basics, there are circumstance, status, and item bonuses, though item bonuses normally take the form of permanent bonuses from your gear, so like, an item bonus to attack is probably coming from a magical weapon. Bonuses of the same type don't stack, so you can't get a plus one and a plus two circumstance bonus to attack, because those are both circumstance bonuses. However, you can stack types of bonuses from other, you know, bonus types. So you can't double dip into a particular type of modifier, but you can mix and match. Why this matters is mainly because of how Pathfinder 2e has four degrees of success on every roll. Since if you succeed on a check by 10 or fail by 10, you critically succeed or fail respectively, a plus one does way more than it might seem at first glance. For example, Getting a plus one to attack doesn't just mean that you hit if you roll one lower on your d20, it also means that you might be able to crit when rolling one lower on your d20. Well, the math isn't perfect since there's way, way too many situations to actually account for this quick. Think of a plus one to attack increasing your expected damage from that attack somewhere between five and 15%. And you know what? A plus two is somewhere between a 10 and a 30% increase. And this also stacks with any penalties to AC. Your target has like a minus two penalty from being flat footed. So a plus two bonus to attack against someone who's flat footed is going to be somewhere between a 20 and a 60% expected damage increase. The best way that I know of for encouraging your entire group to think about it and actually, you know, seek out modifiers is to announce whenever they make a difference. Instead of just saying that something crits you, say that it crits you because you're flat-footed. If you're playing on the Foundry Virtual Tabletop, then I really recommend the Modifiers Matter module since it does it automatically. Highlighting when modifiers make a difference is a great way of helping other people realize that they really do make a huge difference, since otherwise it can take people a really long time to notice just how big of a difference a simple plus one can make. I know that it took me a long time. That does lead us to the next thing I wanted to talk about though, which is teamwork. Since you might be wondering, where do you get these mythical modifiers from? And the short answer is just working together with your friends. Oftentimes setting up your ally for a big hit is a better use of one of your actions than just make it an inaccurate third attack. Setting up flanks for your friends, knocking enemies prone, body blocking your squishy allies from getting turned into paste, or, al or just aiding your allies can make a really big difference. When I'm playing a PC with the action economy that can actually account for it, I like to try and help up my party with at least one of my actions every turn, even if it's just something as simple as getting into a flank for someone. Not just rogues need to be in flanks. There are some other things about combat that I want to get out of the way real quick before we talk about some more of the GM-focused tips that I have. First off, combat in Pathfinder 2e is a marathon, not a sprint. In Pathfinder 1e and 5e, damage potential can quickly get out of control and make fights finish in a couple of rounds, but really, that doesn't happen in 2e. And the length of combats doesn't change much as you level up. Which is actually nice because it leaves more room for interesting tactical decisions instead of every fight being rocket tag. Also, PCs are going to be taking a lot of damage, and there isn't a build in the game that gets you a high enough AC where you just don't get hit. Every PC is 
going to get hit, and there's a reason why PCs have a lot of health. Basically, in severe and extreme encounters, it is not at all surprising if a PC gets knocked unconscious. The game is balanced around your party being around full health, and by god, it will use the full health bar. Finally, and relating to that last point, I really cannot recommend enough having someone in your party that can heal outside of combat. In combat healing can certainly be good, but having a way to heal up outside of combat allows for you to actually enter into combats with full health. At least full health on your frontline characters, which is what is expected by the system, and means that, you know, you won't feel like wet tissue paper. Alrighty then, let's talk about some stuff that is predominantly focused for GMs. The most important thing by far that GMs should learn or take into account is encounter design. This might come as a bit of a shock for any experienced GM, but the rules given by Paizo for designing encounters in 2E are actually good and accurate. That's right, most severe encounters are going to feel around the same level of difficulty as other severe encounters, though encounters against a single strong enemy are likely to be harder than against a bunch of weaker enemies. Just high level enemies are really scary in this game, so yeah. Different encounters are probably going to express their difficulty in different ways though because some encounters are likely to, you know, apply a bunch of diseases and curses that'll take a long time to resolve but are really crippling, well, some encounters are just gonna do a ridiculous amount of damage. The site pf2easy.com has an amazing encounter builder that I really recommend that GMs use because it makes things a lot, of, a lot easier and it helps you look at how difficult each encounter is expected to actually be. Just keep in mind, and please read through what in each encounter difficulty actually means, because, like, extreme encounters are basically a 50-50 chance of a TPK. So use them sparingly and know what you're getting into. My other big tip for GMs new to 2E is to read a character's stat block fully and lean into what makes it unique. It's absolutely fine if you miss some stuff, that's, that's really okay. But basically every stat block in 2e has unique actions available to it that will make the creature stand out from its contemporaries so much. This isn't 5e, where basically every creature just makes attack actions or casts spells. And I'm not joking when I say that basically every creature has something unique going for it. You might think that zombies are super boring and just do basic zombie stuff, but <laughs> you might be a bit accurate when you're talking about zombie shamblers because they're like level minus one, but zombie hulks can really spice things up, especially if there's some zombie shamblers around, because like, who doesn't love a large sized zombie that can throw other, like actual animate zombies at people as a ranged attack? It's really fun and leaning into what can make a fight unique and interesting is a great way to get your players more engaged in the combat and also make fights more memorable. Basically, monsters in 2e are actually really fun to play, so lean into it so your players will have more fun and you're going to have more fun because you're not just doing the same thing over and over again. So yeah. There's absolutely stuff that I missed, or glossed over way too much without going into detail that I'd prefer to do, but that's the nature of a general overview video like this. 2e can absolutely be a bit intimidating to get into at first, but it does flow naturally once you adjust to it, which I honestly don't think will take too long if you have any experience in TTRPGs, or really if you're just a bit aware of the rules. 2e is a great system, and we're glad to have you playing with us. Thanks for watching. This video feels a bit weird to make since I normally dive really deep into one part of the system rather than just skimming over multiple parts, but well, what do you guys think? Uh, do you think that I've missed anything in particular that new players should be at least aware of? And if you are new, is there anything that is confusing to you that I didn't cover? Or is there anything confusing that I did cover? Let me know in a comment down below, and I don't know, subscribe while you're down there or something. Until I see you next, live a wonderful life.